In this video, you'll learn how PHP frameworks like Laravel and Symfony deal with sensitive settings like database credentials, and also how application configuration is typically organized. We'll do this by continuing the development of the framework we've been developing up to now. So far in this series, we've developed controllers that can be quite concise, as we can inject any dependencies using the dependency injection container. We can also easily interact with the database by using the Doctrine Object Relational Mapper. Both the DI container and Doctrine are configured in the Bootstrap file. Also in here are the various routes that we've added. As we develop the application, it's likely that we'll want to add more definitions to the DI container, and more routes to the router. Ideally, we shouldn't be doing this in here, as this file is part of the framework. If we keep modifying it, we risk breaking this part of the code. This file could also get very large and more difficult to maintain if we have lots of definitions and lots of roots. So, let's extract these out into separate files. The PHPDI container allows us to place definitions in a file that returns an array then pass the path of that file to the addDefinitions method. So let's start by creating a new folder in the root of the application called config. In here, let's create a new file called definitions.php and add the PHP opening tag. Then in the bootstrap file, let's select the array that we're passing to the addDefinitions method of the DI container builder object. Let's cut this and paste it in the definitions file we just added. Let's add a semicolon at the end of this and a return statement before it. We also need to add several use statements for all the interfaces and classes that we're using in these definitions. Then back in the bootstrap file, we can pass the path to this file to the add definitions method of the DI container builder. Let's try that by going to the products page in the browser, and it still works. Let's do the same for the roots. So let's create a file in the config folder called roots.php and start with the PHP opening tag. The router package doesn't include functionality for loading roots from a file like the DI container does, so we'll do this in a different way. First, in the bootstrap file, let's select these lines where we're adding roots to the router object, cut them, and paste them in the roots file we just added. Let's also include the use statements for the two controller classes that these roots use. Now we could just require this file from the bootstrap file at the point where we just cut this code, and it would work. However, a common pattern when doing something like this is to encapsulate this code in a function and return that from this file. So that this works, we need to pass an instance of the router into this function, so that it's available in the function's local scope. And this of course needs an appropriate use statement for the router class. This keeps the code more organized and clearly defines what objects are necessary in order for this code to run. Back in the bootstrap file at the point where we removed the roots, First, let's require the roots file we just created and place its return value into a variable. This variable now contains a function, so we can call it by just putting the variable name, passing the router instance to it as an argument. Let's check that everything still works, and it does. So now, to add definitions or roots, we don't edit the bootstrap file, Instead, we edit the definitions or roots file accordingly. One thing we are repeating now in the bootstrap file is this code where we're using the dir name function along with the dir constant to determine the root folder of the application. Let's remove this repetition by defining a constant at the top of the script called app root that contains the result of running this code. We can then use this when we require composer's autoloader when we load the definitions file, and when we require the roots file. Let's quickly check that everything still works, and it does. While the definitions and roots change as we're developing, 
these don't differ between environments. What will change are details such as the database connection credentials. These are the settings I'm using with my local database. But when I run this application on another server, for example in production, these values will be different. A common way to manage values like this is to store these values in environment variables. This avoids potentially sensitive values being hard-coded in the application code like this. Environment variables can be set directly in the operating system or via the web server configuration. However, a common way to manage environment variables is to store them in a .env file. This is a simple text file that stores environment variables as key value pairs for local configuration. So let's create a file in the root of the application called .env. The values that we need to configure Doctrine are the database driver, the host name, database name, username and password. To keep this simple, let's assume that the database driver will be the same on another server. So in the .env file, we need settings for the database host, name, username and password. The values for these are the same values we're using in the definitions file. Note that this isn't PHP code, rather just simple key value pairs. The keys can be whatever you like, but it's best practice to keep them simple and uppercase. To access these values from elsewhere in this application, first we need to load them into the corresponding environment variables. A very commonly used package that does this is the php.env package, and is in fact what Laravel uses. So on the command line from the root of our application, let's install this using Composer. Then in the bootstrap file, to load the .env file values into environment variables, we call the createImmutable method on the .env class passing in the path to where the .env file is located. For that, we can use the constant we created earlier. Then we call the load method on that object. And this, of course, requires the .env class to be imported into the current namespace. Then, in the definitions file, instead of these hard-coded values, we can access the environment variables via the env superglobal, using the keys from the .env file. Let's check that it still works, and it does. So now the application code no longer contains any sensitive data. So that these settings aren't stored with the rest of the code base, the .env file is not usually saved to source code control. For example, if you're using git, you'd typically add the .env file to the .gitignore file. As this file is no longer part of the code base, any new installation of this code needs to know exactly what values to put in the .env file. A common way to do this is to create a copy of the .env file and name it .env.example. Then, in that new file, remove just the values. This file will be part of the code base, so any new install of this code can make a copy of this file, called the copy.env, and then add the appropriate settings. So now the bootstrap file is much simpler, and unless we change the functionality of the framework, we don't need to edit this file. Any definitions we need to add to the DI container, we do in the definitions file in the config folder. Likewise for any new routes, we add these to the routes file in the same folder. Any additional configuration settings like SMTP server passwords our API keys go in the .env file. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.